Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton. I'm an Irish storyteller, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. As you may have seen from my other videos, I do love Italy, in particular the region of Tuscany, and for tonight's sleep story, I decided to imagine what life might have been like in Tuscany all the way back in a simpler time, in the 1920s, when life would have been quite uninterrupted there, when community was very strong, and when people lived very simple existences. If you'd like to hear more of this village, and more about the various inhabitants, do let me know in the comments, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you. Okay, let's do the relaxation session, which will take a few minutes. Before tonight's sleep story, I'm going to count down from ten to one, and as I do, allow yourself to let go more and more. Ten. Feel the support of the bed beneath you, or the floor, or whatever you lie upon tonight. And beneath whatever you lie upon, feel the ever-present support of the earth, our home, our constant support. And with the knowledge of that support now, the awareness of it, See if you can allow yourself to let go a little bit more now, to soften a little bit more now, to ease into this moment a little bit more now. Nine. You are safe. Allow my voice to be a friend tonight, an anchor of safety, an anchor of trust that will only ever take you to safe places. And with this knowledge, with this safety, ease more into this moment, this moment of peace, this moment of rest, this moment that is yours. Eight. Peace lives within you. It is a constant friend, for it is always there, just waiting to be seen, waiting to be heard, waiting to be felt. See if you can find your constant friend tonight. And if you do, where does it dwell within you? And when you find it, see if you can feel it throughout yourself, both in your body and in your mind. Seven. The day is done. 
Whatever has been, has been. Whatever will be, will be. Just let go now. Whatever thoughts you might have about what has been, or whatever thoughts you might have about what will come. In this moment, the best way you can serve yourself is to see those thoughts, recognize them for what they are, thoughts, and not you, and let them go, for they will still be there tomorrow. So watch them float away now, like clouds in a starlit sky, or leaves on a moonlit river. Six, this is your moment. This is your time. Enjoy that fact. Enjoy that you have nowhere to be. Nowhere to go. And by moving towards rest and sleep now, you are doing the best possible thing you can for yourself. Perhaps allow a little coziness in this moment, a feeling that because this is your moment, that you move a little bit more under the covers A little bit more of a feeling of warmth. Five. Feel into your body now. See where you are still holding. Maybe it's in your feet. Maybe it's in your lower legs. Maybe it's in your belly. Maybe it's in your chest. Maybe your hands. Or maybe your face. Your body has worked hard for you today. It's time to let it rest. Four. Perhaps allow a little gratitude now. Gratitude for the simple things. Gratitude for the shelter you have tonight. Gratitude for life. Gratitude for those you care about. Three, begin to engage with your imagination now. Begin to see a beautiful little village in the Tuscan countryside of Italy. Back in the 1920s, 
transport yourself to this otherworldly place, far away from all that you know. Two, checking in one more time now. Releasing any tension. And one, completely letting go now. As I tell you, tonight's sleep story. In the rolling hills of Tuscany, the village of Montelupo basks in the gentle embrace of a warm spring morning. The sun has just risen, casting a soft golden light over the terracotta rooftops and stone-paved streets. The air is fresh, carrying the faint scent of olive groves and blooming wildflowers from the surrounding countryside. The village, thriving in the heart of Italy in the 1920s, is a place of everyday beauty and simple pleasures. Now, during this period in history, life in a small Tuscan village like Montelupo was marked by a deep sense of community and interdependence. The isolation from larger towns and cities meant that the villagers relied heavily on each other for their daily needs and social interactions. Each member of the community played a vital role, contributing their skills and resources to ensure the well-being of the village as a whole. The village was, you might say, a self-contained universe where everyone knew each other and their lives were very much reliant on each other. This splendid isolation fostered a strong sense of solidarity and kindness among the villagers. They understood that their survival and happiness depended on mutual support and cooperation. Neighbors helped each other with tasks, shared resources during tough times, and celebrated life's joys together. And in the 1920s, this time that we will join the villagers in a moment, Technological advancements and modern conveniences were slowly making their way into rural areas. But many villages like Montelupo retained their traditional ways of life. The villagers lived close to the land and from the land with agriculture being a main source of sustenance. The fields, vineyards and olive groves surrounding the village provided the ingredients for their simple yet delicious cuisine. And despite the hard work and occasional hardships, there was a sense of contentment and fulfillment in the simplicity of village life. For the villagers found joy in their daily routines, the beauty of their surroundings, and the warmth of their relationships. The isolation from the outside world allowed them to focus on what truly mattered, family, community, 
and the shared experience of living in harmony with nature. Now, imagine, if you will, that we will transport ourselves to this village, Montelupo, in the 1920s, and we will visit some of the village's residents. Let's start with Giovanni the Potter. Giovanni starts his day as he has for years. His workshop, a modest building near the village centre, is already buzzing with activity. The rhythmic sound of his foot-operated wheel turning echoes through the space. He expertly shapes the clay with calloused hands, creating bowls, vases, and cups for the villagers. His movements are steady and practiced, each piece taking shape with precision. Giovanni works methodically, his focus unwavering as he moulds the clay. He hums a quiet tune, one that his father used to sing when they worked together. This is, in a way, Giovanni's meditation. Occasionally, he pauses to inspect a piece ensuring it meets his high standards before setting it aside to dry. The morning sunlight filters through the small windows of his workshop, illuminating the dust motes that dance in the air. Outside, the sounds of the village greeting a new day blend with the soft clinking of pottery. Now, let's visit Maria the baker. Maria's day begins before the sun has fully risen. She is the village baker, and her small bakery is renowned for its fresh bread and pastries. The warmth of the oven radiates through the room, creating a cozy atmosphere. Maria moves with practiced efficiency, kneading dough and shaping loaves with expert hands. The scent of baking bread fills the air, mingling with the faint aroma of herbs and spices. She stops her work for a moment and closes her eyes. And she breathes in deeply and lets out a big sigh. Feeling grateful for this moment and the opportunity to live a new day. Her routine is one of careful timing and precision. She checks the progress of the bread in the ovens, ensuring each loaf is perfectly golden. Maria's face is flushed from the heat, but she wears a contented smile. She enjoys the early morning solitude, the quiet before the village comes alive. Soon, customers will arrive, eager to purchase their daily bread. But for now, Maria savors the peaceful rhythm of her work. Now, 
Let's visit Antonio. Antonio is the owner of the village cafe, a place where villagers come to relax and socialize. His day starts with preparing the cafe for the morning visitors. He ensures the tables are clean, the coffee is brewed to perfection, and the pastries are fresh. Antonio checks the cleanliness of the facilities, scrubbing the marble floors and benches to ensure they are spotless. The cafe has been in Tonio's family for generations. It is a hub of activity throughout the day, and Antonio, as his father and grandfather before him, and mother and grandmother before him, takes pride in maintaining a welcoming environment. He greets the early arrivals with a nod and a smile, providing them with newspapers and guiding them to their preferred tables. The sound of clinking cups and the murmur of conversations create a soothing backdrop to his work. And as the village of Montelupo comes to life, the daily routines of its inhabitants paint a picture of community, a community rooted in tradition and simple pleasures. The potter's wheel continues to turn. The scent of fresh bread wafts through the streets. And the cafe offers a sanctuary of relaxation. Let's go back and visit Giovanni the potter who is deeply immersed in his work now. His workshop is a modest but well-organized space, and it is filled with the earthy scent of clay. As Giovanni works the wheel, his thoughts drift to the markets where his pottery is sold. Each piece he creates is not just a product, but something that is part of his legacy, a tradition that has been handed down through generations of his family. This morning, Giovanni is working on a special commission for a local vineyard. They have requested a set of containers to store their finest wines, and as he shapes the first vessel, his mind is deeply focused on the balance and symmetry required for such a large piece. Meanwhile, Maria is busy in her bakery. The ovens are already blazing, and the first batch of bread is just coming out, filling the bakery with an irresistible aroma. She carefully places the loaves on wooden racks to cool, then turns her attention to the next task, preparing dough for her famous olive bread, a favorite among the villagers. 
But Maria's bakery is more than just a place to buy bread. It's a living excuse for the villagers to be social. People gather here to exchange news and share stories. And as she kneads the dough, Maria listens to the early risers chatting outside her window. Their voices a comforting background to her morning routine. She smiles, knowing that soon they will come inside, drawn by the scent of fresh bread and the promise of a friendly conversation. Back at the cafe, Antonio is busy, ensuring everything is perfect for the morning rush. The tables are neatly arranged, each adorned with a small vase of fresh flowers picked from his garden. He checks the coffee machines, making sure they are ready to brew the strong, aromatic espresso that his regulars love. The pastries are laid out in an inviting display, each one a small work of art. Antonio's Café is a cornerstone of the village's social life a place where friends meet and newcomers are welcomed. This morning, he notices a group of young students from the nearby town, likely here to visit the historical sites of Montelupo. He prepares a tray of pastries and takes it over to their table introducing himself and offering a warm welcome. His friendly demeanor and genuine, sincere hospitality make everyone feel at home. As the morning progresses, Giovanni pauses his work to stretch and take in the view from his workshop window. More and more villagers are moving about now, and the sounds of daily life fill the air. Giovanni notices Maria's bakery, busy with activity, customers lining up for their morning bread. Giovanni smiles, thinking about how the fresh loaves will soon grace the tables of many homes in Montelupo. He decides to step out for a moment to visit Maria's bakery, not only to stretch his legs, but also to buy a loaf of her famous olive bread. As he walks through the marketplace, he exchanges greetings with his fellow villagers, enjoying the brief interactions that punctuate his solitary work. These moments of connection are important to him, reinforcing the sense of community that defines life in Montelupo in the 1920s. Inside the bakery, Maria is serving her customers with her usual warm smile. She hands out loaves of bread and pastries, engaging in friendly banter with each person. The bakery is a lively place, 
filled with laughter and the comforting smell of freshly baked goods. Maria takes pride in knowing that her work brings joy and sustenance to the village. As the line of customers begins to thin, Maria spots Giovanni entering the bakery. Buongiorno, Giovanni, she calls out cheerfully. Come in, come in. I've just baked a fresh batch of olive bread. Giovanni grins and steps up to the counter. Buongiorno, Maria. I was hoping to get one of those loaves. They're perfect for my lunch. Maria quickly wraps a loaf in brown paper and hands it to him. Here you go. I've also included a little extra for you to try. It's a new recipe I'm working on. Meanwhile, Antonio is busy attending to his café patrons. The café is now filled with the rich aroma of espresso and the sweet scent of pastries. Antonio moves between tables, refilling cups and chatting with customers. And as the morning rush subsides, Antonio takes a moment to breathe and glance out the window. And as he does, he sees Giovanni walking back towards his workshop, carrying the loaf of bread he just purchased. Antonio decides to take a short break and steps outside to wave at his friend. Giovanni, how's the pottery coming along today? Giovanni pauses and waves back. It's going well, Antonio. Just taking a break. How's the cafe? Busy as ever, Antonio replies with a chuckle. Why don't you stop by later for a coffee? I've got a new blend I think you'll like. I'll take you up on that, Giovanni says with a smile. See you this afternoon. Soon, Giovanni is back in his workshop. The morning's work has been productive, and he decides to take a brief break to enjoy his lunch. He finds a comfortable spot under the shade of an old olive tree just outside his workshop, a familiar place where he often sits to gather his thoughts. He unwraps the loaf and takes a deep breath, savoring the fresh aroma of the bread. And as he eats, he allows his mind to wander, reflecting on the morning's work and the satisfaction he finds in his craft. The gentle rustling of the olive leaves and the light hum of village life provide a soothing background to his thoughts. And with the morning rush over, Maria takes a moment to rest. She steps out of the bakery and finds a seat on a small bench nearby, her favorite spot to take in the village's activity. 
she closes her eyes for a moment, feeling the warmth of the sun on her face and the gentle breeze that carries the scents of the countryside. Maria reflects on the joy her baking brings to the villagers and the sense of community that fills her bakery each day. She takes a deep breath, letting the peace of the moment wash over her. The simple act of sitting quietly and appreciating the beauty around her helps her feel grounded and content. She knows that soon she will return to the bakery, but for now she cherishes this quiet interlude. And in the lull between the morning and afternoon crowds, Antonio takes a break from his duties at the cafe. He steps outside and walks a short distance to a small park near the center of the village. Finding a bench under a flowering cherry tree, he sits down and watches the world go by. He takes a few moments to meditate, focusing on his breath and the natural beauty surrounding him. The soft chirping of birds and the fragrance of blooming flowers fill the air. He thinks about the interactions he's had with his customers, the friendships he's nurtured and the sense of fulfillment he gets from running his cafe. This moment of peace and introspection is a treasured part of his daily routine, allowing him to return to his work with renewed energy and a calm mind. After his moment of quiet reflection under the olive tree, Giovanni decides to take advantage of the midday break by visiting the old Roman bath at the edge of the village. The bath a remnant from ancient times, has been well maintained by the villagers and serves as a communal gathering place. Its warm, mineral-rich waters are said to have therapeutic properties, offering both relaxation and rejuvenation. Giovanni walks through the winding streets of Montelupo, greeting neighbors and friends as he makes his way to the bath. The bathhouse is a beautiful structure with columns and mosaics that harken back to its Roman origins. Stepping inside, 
he is greeted by the familiar warmth and the calming atmosphere. Giovanni removes his sandals and steps into the warm water. Feeling the tension in his muscles begin to melt away. The bath is a serene place, with only a few other villagers present, enjoying the tranquil environment. As he swims slowly through the water, he lets his mind drift, appreciating the peace and quiet. The experience is both physically and mentally refreshing, providing a perfect break in his day. Back in her bakery, Maria has returned to her work, preparing for the afternoon customers the brief rest she took earlier has given her the energy to continue with her tasks. She needs the dough for the next batch of bread, her movements rhythmic and steady, and the bakery is still filled with the comforting scent of baking. Maria occasionally thinks of the old Roman bath, a place she visits on her days off to unwind and socialize with friends. Although she doesn't have time to go today, the thought of the warm, soothing water and the friendly atmosphere brings a smile to her face. Antonio, after his moment of meditation in the park, returns to the cafe with a renewed sense of calm. The afternoon crowd begins to trickle in, and he welcomes each customer with his usual warmth and hospitality. The cafe is once again filled with the lively hum of conversation, the clinking of cups, and the occasional burst of laughter. As he prepares, fresh coffee. Antonio overhears a group of regulars discussing their plans to visit the old Roman bath later in the day. He smiles, remembering his own visits to the bath. The idea of taking a relaxing soak in the warm water appeals to him. But he knows his duties at the cafe come first. Perhaps he will make time to visit the bath tomorrow. A small reward for his hard work. After the afternoon rush, Maria decides to take a walk. She wanders through the narrow streets, her eyes drawn to the charming architecture that defines Montelupo. The buildings with their red-tiled roofs 
and stone facades tell stories of generations past. She admires the intricate ironwork on the balconies, the colorful flower boxes that adorn windows, and the worn cobblestones that have been tread upon by countless villagers over the years. And as she walks, Maria's thoughts drift to the craftsmanship that went into building these homes and shops. Each stone and beam was placed with care, a labor of love by the skilled hands of artisans. Her stroll takes her to the central square, where the village's oldest buildings stand proudly. She stops in front of a particular stone house, its facade slightly weathered, but still standing strong. This building holds special significance for Maria. It was built by her grandfather, a master stonemason. She remembers fondly the stories that her father told her about how her grandfather worked tirelessly to construct this home ensuring every detail was perfect. Maria runs her fingers along the rough stone, feeling a connection to her grandfather and the legacy he left behind. She imagines him, young and strong, carefully laying each stone, envisioning a future where his descendants would walk these same streets. The thought fills her with warmth and gratitude. After his refreshing swim at the old Roman bath, Giovanni decides to take a leisurely walk back to his workshop. The village is quiet in the late afternoon sun, and he enjoys the tranquility as he meanders through the streets. He pauses occasionally to chat with neighbors sharing small moments of connection that are the heartbeat of Montelupo. Antonio, having finished his duties at the cafe for the moment, decides to take a short walk to clear his mind. He strolls through the village, greeting familiar faces and enjoying the peaceful atmosphere. The sun is beginning to dip in the sky, and he feels a deep inner contentment in this moment. He finds himself in front of an old villa, its once grand facade, now softened by time, Antonio knows this villa well, for it was built by one of the most renowned architects in the region. Antonio stands for a moment, imagining the construction site it must have been, filled with workers and the sound of tools. 
and as the afternoon turns to evening, the three villagers' paths begin to converge. The day's activities are winding down, and the air is growing cooler, and the sun is gently saying goodbye to the day. Giovanni finishes his work, placing the last of his pottery pieces on the shelf to dry. He washes his hands, feeling the cool water cleanse the remnants of clay from his fingers. Satisfied with his day's labor, he heads towards Antonio's cafe, looking forward to the company of his friends. Maria closes her bakery, the last loaves of bread and pastries sold to the evening customers. She wipes down the counters and puts away her tools, enjoying the quiet satisfaction of a productive day. She slips off her apron and steps out into the twilight, making her way to the cafe where she knows Giovanni and Antonio will be waiting. Antonio prepares the cafe for the evening, lighting the small lanterns on each table and setting out fresh flowers. The cafe takes on a cozy, inviting glow, perfect for the evening's gathering. As the last few customers of the day finish their drinks, Antonio sets up a special table by the window, anticipating the arrival of his friends. Soon, the three of them are sitting together. Giovanni leans back in his chair and says, I have a story to share, one that my grandfather used to tell me. He begins, Many years ago, long before any of us were born, Montelupo was a village much like it is today, filled with hard-working and kind-hearted people. Among them, was a young stonemason named Enrico. Enrico was known for his exceptional skill and his deep love for the village. He took great pride in his work, building homes and structures that would stand the test of time. One day, a wealthy nobleman from a neighboring town approached Enrico was a lucrative offer. He wanted Enrico to build a grand villa on his estate, promising him a generous payment and a life of comfort. The offer was tempting, as it would have lifted Enrico and his family out of their modest means. However, Enrico loved Montelupo, and its people. He knew that if he left, the village would lose a skilled craftsman and the community would be impacted. After much contemplation, Enrico decided to stay, choosing the well-being of his village over personal gain. He continued to build, his work creating the foundation for the strong, beautiful village we live in today. 
The three friends make a toast to Enrico and continue to tell stories and laugh and enjoy each other's company for some time into the evening. Then they bid each other good night and each one steps out of the cafe and walks to their respective homes. And as Giovanni, Maria, and Antonio settle into their pets, the village of Montelupo is enveloped in a serene tranquility. The day's work is done, and the night brings rest and rejuvenation. Each of them drifts off to sleep, their dreams filled with the simple joys and deep connections that define life in their beloved village. The moon shines softly over Montelupo that night. A silent friend watching over this magic little village and its kind inhabitants' peaceful slumber. <laughs>